the genesis of the conflict and the divide between the Catholic and Protestant population in Northern Ireland really began when King Henry VIII declared that Ireland would be uh, from henceforth the property of Great Britain. It's a colonial uh, legacy. And in the 1600s, the plantation period began and Scottish planters who were Protestant uh, came to Ireland and took over the land that belonged to the domestic population who were at the time Catholic. So that's where the divide comes into place. Uh, if, you, if you move forward uh, to 1968, when the troubles began, what you saw was uh, a, a civil rights movement for Catholics who were protesting discrimination in housing, employment, and education. It began very much like a civil rights movement in the United States. It was nonviolent. It was peaceful. Uh, but there were always people, especially um, in the working class neighborhoods where the discrimination was worse, who believed that violence really could only be the tool that would get uh, change. And so the conflict quickly morphed from a uh, peaceful civil rights movement to an armed conflict. And it basically pit the British government against the Irish Republican Army or the provisional Irish Republican Army. And uh, Protestant people felt that the government wasn't doing enough to defend their interests. So they also formed their own paramilitary similar to the PIRA. Those paramilitaries were called the Ulster Volunteer Force and the Ulster Defense Association. The Good Friday Agreement or the Belfast Agreement did end the violence. It's been very successful at doing that. The main problem is it did not resolve the geopolitical question at the heart of the conflict. And that is that the Catholic population primarily, they're known as nationalists or Republicans, want to be a part of a united Ireland. And the Protestant population, known as unionist or loyalist, want to remain as a part of Great Britain. So what the peace agreement did is it said, we will not change the constitutional status of Northern Ireland at the um, butt of a gun, but we will do it peacefully through a referendum if it looks like a, a constant, the, you know, the vote would go in favor of unification. So the idea was basically, we're gonna put this geopolitical issue aside and say the, the solution will be through a referendum, not through violence. So what it means is the geopolitical question was never really resolved. So the two sides stopped fighting with one another with weapons, but they fought in other ways around issues like Irish language and things like this to gain advantage over the other side. Brexit raised the question of a border. Right now in Northern Ireland, if you, if you drive from Belfast to Dublin or if you drive from Dublin to Belfast, the border is virtually invisible. The only way you know that you've crossed it is because of the color of the street signs uh, changes when you cross the border. Uh, and the reason you could have that after the, the peace started was because the United Kingdom and Ireland were both in the EU. So like other border states in the EU, people and goods can move across EU territory without passport checks and customs. But when Brexit came along, uh, there needed to be a border someplace for customs checks. So the question was, where do you put the border? Uh, the country of Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, uh, did not want a land border between uh, Northern Ireland, which is part of the UK, and Ireland, because uh, during the Troubles, the conflict, um, the border was often a sub subject to attack. Guard posts and military installations were subjected to attacks by Republican paramilitaries. So they did not want to create an infrastructure that dissident Republicans um, could attack. But the Unionist Protestant population did not want the other alternative, which is to put a border in the Irish Sea. They did not want this because what they saw this was a, an internal checkpoint, an internal border that indicated they were not formally or fully part of the United Kingdom. The Northern Ireland Protocol, which went into place a couple of months ago, basically said that any goods coming from the United Kingdom, the main part of the United Kingdom, say from Liverpool or Manchester or even London into uh, Belfast, even though they're the same country, they now have to go undergo custom checks in the ports in Northern Ireland. So there's now a sort of de facto border between two parts of the United Kingdom. And so what you're seeing on the streets right now is loyalist discontent, loyalist or unionist discontent with the Northern Ireland Protocol. It's also fair to say that people across the, the uh, ethno-sectarian divide are also unhappy with the protocol in terms of implementation because it's taking longer for things to cross the border. The other thing to keep in mind here is how 
the, the decision to put the border in the Irish Sea instead of on land is regarded by uh, the unionist and loyalist population as a loss. That the nationalist Republican side of the conflict got the border where they wanted it and the unionist Protestant side did not. Irish reunification is more likely now than it has been since the Good Friday Agreement was signed. But I would not uh, look at this in a romantic or gauzy sort of way. You know, this is uh, a real big change that would happen. And for it to happen in a smooth way, a lot of issues have to first be decided. And you also have to figure out how do you unify um, when you have a large segment of people in Northern Ireland who do not want to do this, and in fact also have paramilitaries that are still in existence that might uh, sort of re-engage and fight, uh, fight a united Ireland once it happens.